Back in our second intermission with Elliot now, and as uh, we get close to the Stanley Cup, Elliot, things really start to heat up around the NHL in terms of hirings, too. So let's start on the GM front with Toronto. Okay, so we know that there was one visit last week. Brad Tree Living, the former GM of the Calgary Flames, he visited for a few days. I believe there was, it's possible there was a second visit, but I haven't nailed it down yet. So, Ron, I'm not going to guess, but I think there might have been a second one. Uh, it was not Mark Bergevin. I think they talked to him via Zoom because he's still at the Worlds. You know, you've heard Jason Botterill's name. You've heard Peter Sorelli's name. I think there's a few other names uh, that the Maple Leafs have talked to, at least to sort of begin the conversation process. I think one one of those names was Doug Wilson, the former Sharks GM. I think they've been in contact with him too. But at this point in time, the only one I can confirm that was in person, I believe, was Tree Living. And I'm not sure yet on the second one. How about Pittsburgh? So you're a big F1 guy, yes. I know. So no. Monaco Grand Prix tomorrow. And uh, the Pittsburgh ownership is in uh, is in uh, Monaco for the Grand Prix. And then they're coming back. And I think the entire... Uh, Penguin organization is just waiting to see Kyle Dubas's decision. I said several times this week, I believe this is his job if he wants it. And I think when they get back, it, it comes down to uh, are they going to work it out and is he going to be the guy? And, uh, you know, he met with Sidney Crosby last week. He did a tour of the organization. They definitely have, they put their search on hold to speak to him and woo him and we'll see where it goes. Well, a quick F1 story. Sergio Perez, Max Verstappen's on the pole at Monaco. So Max will be happy with Max. Mm -hmm. uh, his teammate on Red Bull Racing crashed his car in uh, qualifying today and they lifted it up with a crane and they were all upset at Red Bull because, uh-oh, everyone in the world will be taking photographs of the undercarriage of the car. And that's how much they're into those kinds of analytics, which is why Kyle Dubas uh, seems like a good fit for that group. Mm. They like that kind of thing. They Coaches, sure do. Calgary. Do you want to start with Calgary? Or? You know what? Uh, I was going to start with, let's, I'm going to start with the Rangers. You do what so you want. the Rangers, uh, look, I think a lot of people are beginning to lean Peter Laviolette on this one. I think if it is Laviolette, we're going to find out next week. So that's kind of where I sit with the Ranger coaching job. In Nashville, we still don't have clarity on John Hines' situation there, but I do believe the Predators have talked to some other potential coaches. I think some people would like to see um, just Hines get some clarity here on what his future is, but I think the Predators have looked elsewhere. Now let's go to Calgary. Uh, the Flames, from what I understand, are really going to begin their process now. They had their scouting meetings last week and they began to reach out to some candidates. Like, for example, I think they did reach out to Laviolette, but now they're going to get serious. The word is from some of the people is that they do plan on giving legit chances to their three internal candidates. Ryan Huska, Kirk Muller, who I believe is interviewed with a couple of other teams, and also Mitch Love, the two-time AHL Coach of the Year. But they are also going to go external as well. I've heard there's a lot of names on Calgary's list. And one of the things that I think has been determined here is that a lot of Calgary's players that they want to talk to about extensions and their futures, they're probably all going to wait until obviously who the coach is. So I think we go through that process first. Washington, there's a lot of focus on Spencer Carberry there, who of course was the coach of their American Hockey League team years ago. I think Carberry spoke to four teams this week, so I think that situation is going to come to a head. And finally, Columbus, I thought they'd be first. I'm still trying to get a hold on where they're kind of going here, but Ron, last night at the Memorial Cup, the Quebec Ramparts looked really good. And if there's one team I believe that may have reached out to talk to Patrick Y, I think it might be the Blue Jackets.